Hello everyone and welcome to the seventh and final lesson in schizophrenia. In this video we're going to cover the interactionist approach to schizophrenia which is going to look at interactionist explanations and interactionist treatments. Although that being said there isn't really that much to say about interactionist treatments and we are going to mainly touch on that in an evaluation point rather than in the outline section. So, so far we've had a look at the biological approach to schizophrenia and we've had a look at the psychological approach to schizophrenia. However, the interactionist approach is a bit different because it suggests that there are many contributing factors to the development of the condition. These could be biological, social and psychological. So, for example, biological factors could be genetic vulnerabilities or neurochemical imbalances like the dopamine hypothesis. Whereas psychological factors could include stress caused by major life events or daily hassles or dysfunctional family life like we looked at in the psychological approaches. Now one particular model that uses an interactionist approach is called the diathesis stress model. Now diathesis means vulnerability and in this context stress refers to a negative experience of some kind. And the model effectively says that the development of mental illness is the result of an underlying vulnerability to a particular condition being triggered by a stressor. Both the pre-existing vulnerability and the negative experience are needed for the condition to be triggered. Now the diathesis stress model was first applied to schizophrenia by Meal in 1962. And in this model, Meal suggested that the diathesis, the vulnerability, was entirely genetic and the result of what he called a single schizogene, which then effectively resulted in this idea of a schizotypic personality. One particular trait of this schizotypic personality was a very high sensitivity to stress. Now, according to this model, no amount of stress would trigger the onset of schizophrenia in someone who doesn't have the schizogene. However, in carriers of the gene, chronic stress through childhood, in particular the presence of the schizophrenogenic mother or the use of double binds, could then result in the development of schizophrenia. Okay, so that is the original use of the diathesis stress model for schizophrenia. However, in recent times, our understanding of both vulnerability and stress have changed. So, for example, it is now clear that schizophrenia is actually the result of many different genes rather than just one. Schizophrenia is a polygenic condition, as was shown by Ripke in 2014. It's also now understood that there are a wide range of factors beyond genes that can cause vulnerability, including psychological trauma. So in this more contemporary model, the psychological trauma would actually be the diathesis, would be the vulnerability rather than the stressor, as it was in the original model. One theory has actually proposed that early childhood trauma, such as child abuse, can actually alter the developing brain. For example, by making our HPA system, which is our inbuilt chronic stress response, overactive, making a person more vulnerable to stress in later life. Equally, our concept of a stressor has also evolved. So in the original model, stress was seen as entirely psychological in nature, particularly in relation to parenting. However, although it's still considered to be important, modern definitions of stress in relation to the diathesis stress model include anything that risks triggering schizophrenia. So, for example, the role of cannabis as a trigger in schizophrenia is something that's been extensively researched in recent years, and research has in fact found that cannabis is a stressor because it increases the risk of developing schizophrenia by up to 7%, depending on the dose and the usage. Okay, so our understanding of both vulnerability and stress has evolved massively over the years, and now there is this more contemporary, more modern version of the diathesis stress model. Okay, so let's have a look at a couple of evaluation points. So, first off, we have some supporting evidence, um, and there was research conducted by Tianari et al. in 2004, which was actually an adoption study. 
So children adopted from 19,000 Finnish mothers with schizophrenia between 1960 and 1979 were studied. The adoptive parents were assessed for parenting style and then everyone was compared to a control group. It was found that child rearing styles with high levels of criticism and conflict, which as you know is effectively high levels of negative expressed emotion, were implicated in the development of schizophrenia in high-risk adoptees. So that suggests that genetic vulnerability and family-related stress can contribute to the onset of schizophrenia, which is exactly what the diathesis stress model suggests. However, moving on, you've got this problem that the idea of a single schizogene mixed with the stress of schizophrenic parenting is actually very, very simplistic when you consider how complicated something like schizophrenia actually is. So you've got the fact that schizophrenia is actually polygenic, as put forward by Ripka in 2014, um, and also the fact that stress comes in many different forms and isn't just limited to dysfunctional parenting. For example, Houston et al. in 2008 found that sexual abuse in childhood is a major influence on underlying vulnerability to schizophrenia, and cannabis use is a major trigger. Okay, so research findings like that supports our modern understanding of the diathesis stress model, but it very much limits the original diathesis stress model, which only focuses on one particular gene and the stress caused by dysfunctional parenting. Okay, um, just be aware with this evaluation point, obviously you need to work out how you're going to do your outline because a lot of the research that I've put in this evaluation point was also in the outline of the video, which means that when you come to write a six mark outline on the interactionist approach, you need to be careful not to use too much research in that outline because you don't want to then repeat yourself in the evaluation section. Okay, but I'll show you what that could look like in a sec when we have a look at a six mark outline. Okay, and then finally we have a real world application because the interactionist approach has led to the development of interactionist treatments. Okay, so interactionist treatments for schizophrenia are effectively combination therapies. So you have the use of antipsychotics mixed with psychological therapies like CBT and family therapy. Studies have actually shown that combining treatments enhance their effectiveness in the treatment of schizophrenia. So you've got Tarrier et al. in 2004, who used 315 participants and assigned them to one of three conditions. Two of the conditions were combination therapies, and one of the conditions was a control group of medication only. And they found that, that combination treatments showed greater reduction in symptom severity, which shows that there is a clear practical advantage to adopting an interactionist approach in the treatment of schizophrenia based solely on the superior treatment outcomes that you can see right here. Okay, so those are your three evaluation points, um, and this is your little bit of information about interactionist treatments as well. Okay, so just be aware the interactionist approach comes with interactionist treatments, and the interactionist treatments are biological and psychological treatments used together. Okay, but that is pretty much all you need to know about that. So before we finish off, uh, let's just have a quick look at a possible six mark outline for the interactionist approach. As you know, schizophrenia comes up in paper three, and paper three is very essay heavy. So getting an essay on something in schizophrenia is a given. So this is what I would do if I was writing a six mark outline for outline the interactionist approach to schizophrenia. So I would start off with a nice little introductory sentence, um, something that says what an interactionist approach actually is. I would then move on and I would talk about the diathesis stress model as being an interactionist approach and I would give a very brief definition of what the diathesis stress model is, just in general. I would then go on and I would talk about Meal's model and talk about how it was originally applied to schizophrenia via the assumption of a schizogene mixed with chronic stress through childhood. And then I would finish off by talking about how our understanding of both diathesis and stress has evolved. 
Now I wouldn't use too much research in this final little bit of the outline because I'm planning on using my research, for example, by Houston, I'm planning on using that a little bit later on in my evaluation section. So all we really need for this outline at the end there is to just say that our understanding has evolved and that we now know that vulnerability doesn't have to be caused by genes, but it could also be the result of psychological trauma in childhood. I've got a little bit of other research in there that I've also taken from the outline, just so that I'm putting a little bit of detail in for the examiner. Um, and then I'm just going to finish off by saying that we now also know that stress doesn't have to be psychological in nature, but it could just refer to anything that risks triggering the onset of schizophrenia. Okay, so it's a nice condensed essay. You've got your nice keywords and key phrases in there which kind of drive the outline a little bit and keep me on track so that I don't kind of go off topic and waffle a little bit. Um, but I've managed to get it all in fairly nicely. Okay, this is a little bit of a longer outline than, uh, than other outlines are. So this is around 180 words, give or take, um, which is kind of towards the top end of what you should be aiming for for an outline. Um, but it kind of covers everything that you need. Okay, so that is the end of the video. I hope it's been useful. And if you have any questions, please feel free to pop them in the comment section below and I will do my best to get back to you ASAP. Thank you very much for listening. And if you need any other schizophrenia videos, then the playlist should be popping up on your screen right about now so that you can move on and just quickly go through the other ones as well if you need to. Okay, thank you very much for listening and I'll see you in the next one.